A few months ago, I made a video diving into crew secrets hiding in plain sight. In that video, I explained what those strange symbols on the ship's hull mean, hidden navigation clues in hallways, and a whole lot more. Now, that video, it received almost 900,000 views. And so now, I've got even more crew secrets that are hiding in plain sight. Today, I'll dive into what all these flags mean when you see them on a ship, some little known secrets about a few popular casino games that you'll see, and so much more. So, let's get started. Let's begin with the secret meaning of those flags that you see flying. When a cruise ship approaches a port, it's like ornaments on a Christmas tree. Here's what to know. First, let's start with the flag here that's simply for the cruise line. That one's pretty easy to see and all the cruise lines do it. But then you'll notice a flag that's yellow and blue. This is the Bahamian flag. In this case, the ship was in port in the Bahamas and shows the flag of the country whose waters it is in. This is also known as a courtesy flag. What's not shown here is another country's flag. It's customary for a ship to fly the flag of the country where it is registered when in a foreign port. As you can see here, this carnival ship is flying the flag of Panama where it is registered. But with this NCL ship, however, it's registered in Nassau, so there's no reason to fly the Bahamian flag again. Then there are the solid yellow flag and the half red, half white flag. What do these mean? The yellow flag is the Q or quarantine flag. No, that doesn't mean that the ship is in trouble. It's simply flown until a ship clears customs. The red and white flag, also known as the H or the hotel flag, it's used to show there is a pilot, which is a local captain who helps to navigate ports on the ship. And finally, you might see this red one, which has what is known as a swallow tail. If you think this looks like some sort of warning flag, you're right. It lets everyone know that dangerous goods are being taken on or off the ship. In the case of a cruise ship, you'll see it when the ship is refueling while in port. If you've taken a cruise, then you've noticed these massive spheres around the ship. They almost look like miniature water towers that you'd see in a small town or a city. After a while, they just blend in with the background, but you'll notice every ship has them. So what's the point of these? A clue on these domes gives the answer. In this case, EMC and MTN are communications companies that have since been acquired. But search the industry and you'll find that many are now tied to a company called Anuvu. This is a telecom equipment company that provides service in hard to reach places like airplanes and yes, cruise ships. These huge spheres, they house communication equipment. While it's not clear what goes in each one, in general, it's where the device is used to provide things like internet, television, and other services to the ship and its passengers reside. Truth is, most people likely don't notice the next little secret, but once I tell you about it, it's something that you likely always will. You know that cruise ships, they use tons of heavy ropes to secure the massive ships to the pier when docked. But you also might notice that any rope you see will have a big flat piece of metal attached to it. Sometimes they are painted, sometimes they're just a natural metal color. Sometimes they are near the ship and other times they are at the pier. But you'll see them on every line between the ship and the shore. So what in the heck are they? Well, the official name says it all, rat guards. Having pests on the ship, especially one with thousands of people and tons of food, is a major pain. These rat guards, they serve as a low tech way to keep a rat or other rodent from walking up the lines and making themselves at home on the ship. Now that you know what they are, you'll notice them every time that you sail. There's another feature on cruise ships that you likely don't notice, but you won't be able to stop seeing it once you know about it. Cameras. While cruise lines, they aren't necessarily trying to hide cameras, they just seem to kind of blend in after a while. But once you notice them, you'll spot them everywhere. In fact, if you were in a public area like a promenade, a cabin hallway, or a pool deck, you'll almost surely be within view of a camera. Now, there are a few reasons for this. For one, it helps for safety and liability reasons. If something goes down on the ship, 
there will be a video record of exactly what happened. And there are enough wild stories that we've seen over the years to realize that having a set of eyes around the ship that never blinks is a good idea. But you might not know that US law actually requires ships to have a video system to quote, assist in documenting crimes on the vessel, close quote, with a carve out for areas where a person has a reasonable expectation of privacy. So you won't have one in your cabin, but if you are out and about, expect to be recorded. Do you ever wonder why cruise lines seem to get you so eager to book things like drink packages or shore excursions or internet before you get on the ship? Book your cruise and you'll start getting those emails about buying the packages or the excursions or anything else that the cruise line can offer. In fact, you almost always get a discount as an incentive to book ahead of time. For example, Carnival's drink package. It's 60 bucks per day if you book ahead of time, but $65 if you wait to buy it on the ship. Of course, you might think that the cruise line is just trying to get you to buy but there's a big reason they push you to buy early. It's something called a quote, fresh wallet. The idea goes that if you buy an excursion or a Wi-Fi package, say three months before you cruise, by the time that you are on the ship, you'll have a fresh wallet and won't mind spending more on other things on the ship versus if you waited to buy until you were actually on the cruise. And it works too. A recent conference call with Royal Caribbean Group Executives said that, quote, every dollar guests spend before the voyage translates into about 70 cents more on the dollar when they sail with us and double the overall spending compared to other guests. So not only can you save on what you buy, but you will also likely spend more in total. On a cruise ship, the number of passengers can total close to 7,000 people. Add in the crew, and you could be looking at literally nine to 10,000 people on the ship all at once. Even smaller ships, they number in the thousands. That can make the lifeboats, when compared to the size of the overall vessel, seem way too small. You're gonna get all those people into those little boats? Truth is, however, each one of these lifeboats can carry way more people than you think. Take this one, for example, which spans the width of just three or four cabins on a ship that's roughly a thousand feet long. From the looks of it, you might think it can hold maybe a few dozen people. But Fasmer, the company that builds the boat, shows on their website that it can carry up to 307 passengers. Needless to say, in an event of emergency, you're going to have to get pretty close to fit more than 300 people in one of these boats, and it will likely not be that comfortable. But most people don't realize just how many people can fit in one. Gambling is a major pastime on a cruise. You head down in the evening and you'll see the place packed with people trying their luck. And while most games are what you would expect, things like slot machines or blackjack tables or roulette, cruise ships are known for having some games that you don't normally see in a land-based casino. I'm talking about things like the coin pusher machines the claw cranes, and that game where you try to line up the key with a hole to push out a cash prize. And while these games look like they are all about skill, they actually aren't. Let's start with the coin pusher machines. So common sense says that all those coins on the edge have to be pushed off and go right into your pocket, right? But these machines usually have side slides that aren't very noticeable. So the coins, they aren't just pushed toward you, they also go out to the sides where they fall into side slots and stay in the machine. Claw games, you can line things up perfectly to grab that prize and not get anything at all. That's because these are designed to only provide enough force to actually grab the prize occasionally. The rest of the time, it will close and then gently slide off the prize. And we've all seen a claw grab something perfectly, only to see it slip out of the grasp. And the key machine, you move the joystick and then raise the key to line it up perfectly with the hole for the prize, but they are designed to keep moving just so slightly once you let go, literally millimeters. It's small, but enough to make it tougher to win. 
And like the claw games, the machine can set how often these small movements occur in order to adjust the house's take. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, which I hope you did, I hope that you will also consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It all helps to be seen by more people. As well, you can watch the prequel to learn even more secrets about cruising. I have a link in the description below. And until next time, happy sailing.